So I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. Should I start? Sure. Okay. And, uh, and Shanti Life uh, Institute, too. This is an honor. And also, I want to commend you on, on this achievement. I think this is a meeting that was long overdue. So nice work. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our work and, and uh, the way we uh, kind of view long-term non-progressors in our lab. And I think we're all here because we all identify with these three bullets. Nonetheless, as an introduction, as the AIDS pandemic continues to expand, the need for an effective vaccine has never been greater. Durable control, as you've heard from Peter, does occur in rare individuals who probably represent less than 0.5% of the infected population, called long-term non-progressors, elite controllers, or elite suppressors. We've been studying, we've had a dedicated research effort studying these patients for 14 years in our lab because we and others believe that understanding the mechanisms of control in these patients is likely to provide critical information that can be applied toward the development of effective vaccines and immune-based therapies. So I want to specifically talk a little bit about some of the confusion with respect to nomenclature, how to talk about these patients, what to call them, and we can discuss this, I guess, during the panel discussion as well. But in one of the earliest reviews that I can find by uh, Michelle Klein and Frank Miedema in 1995, they provided the following case definition for long-term survivors or long-term non-progressors. To be categorized as such, you had to be alive for the maximum possible period of follow-up at that point, which was greater than eight to 10 years, in combination with one or more of the following surrogate endpoints. You had to be asymptomatic or AIDS-free, have normal T-cell counts defined by a few different ways, normal absolute counts and minimal attrition over time, or a normal ratio, and or not be receiving antiretroviral therapy. So not a very stringent case definition, and which you should notice that's conspicuously absent is the inclusion of a viral load measurement in this, in this definition. These investigators also included this paragraph, which I really like because I think it not only captures how a number of us continue to think about these patients even in 2009, I also like to use it as a slight justification for why we still call them true long-term non-progressors. Long-term survivors are probably a heterogeneous group with only a minority, less than 1%, having truly non-progressive infection, perhaps permanently. The remainder may be classified as slow progressors because they show minor signs of disease progression, such as slowly decreasing T-cell counts, deteriorating T-cell function, increasing viral loads, or the appearance of SI variants. In the group of true non-progressors, determinants may be identified that could be responsible for true survival. So um, one of the main factors that, dis that distinguishes true long-term non-progressors from slow progressors, as I mentioned, are viral load measurements. And when you, when you apply those, I think you have a much more homogeneous group, certainly much more than when you don't include them. Uh, with the caveats, Peter said there are some of these patients who don't progress, but my view is that a majority of these people, when you use viral load measurements and you follow them longitudinally, that a number of these people do well for a very long time. Um, this is not to say people with slowly progressive disease um, some groups refer to these patients as viremic controllers or, or um, um, patients with, with slowly progressive HIV infection. It's not to say that they're not important. A number of people have showed that this is probably a group that has a number of different functions that are protective. These are some of the things that Peter pointed out. And we have in our own lab have shown that within our cohort, a number of these people have broadly cross-neutralizing antibody activity. In their serum, they have a number of antibodies that can neutralize many diverse types of HIV, which some consider to be the holy grail for developing a preventative prophylactic vaccine. So if you're a patient or a caregiver of a patient with non-progression or somebody who has a, some uh, modicum of control but, but slowly progressive infection, call us, one of us, please. We'll try to accommodate you in our, in our research study. So the case definition that we use in our protocol is here. These patients have to be positive by standard antibody tests, remain healthy with stable clinical courses, have no history of opportunistic diseases, maintain stable non-declining T cell counts with set point viral loads below the lower limit of detection in commercially available assays, and not be receiving antiretroviral or immunomodulatory treatment. This definition is very similar to HIV controllers, elite controllers, elite suppressors. To do this, uh, our protocol is 02I0086. I'm the principal investigator, Nancy Kalyanashita, who really runs the show, is sitting right there. She's our study coordinator. We perform, this is an observational cohort study. We perform leukapheresis at MH once or twice a year on each patient. This enables us to safely obtain more blood products than we would be able to get by uh, simple phlebotomy. So um, this is really how we, we do in a number of our assays. And this is kind of a report card of, of where we are. Um, this is 63 patients. We're actually in the 70s if I include people that have been screened and are scheduled for leukapheresis at NIH. 
These are men and women who have remained healthy for a median duration of 19 years, who are from various racial ethnic backgrounds and have different modes of acquisition of HIV. By definition, they have stable T cell counts and they maintain viral loads below the lower limit of detection and standard assays. We continue, as you've heard, continue to find very strong associations between non-progressor status and particular HLA class one alleles, with B57 being the most significantly overrepresented, present in about 64, 65% of our cohort, whereas it's present in about 10% of people with progressive infection. We're gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what we think this means. If we include other proteins, other HLA class one alleles that have been shown to be protective, like B27 or B44 or B51, some of the ones that were on some of the previous slides, about 90% of the patients in our cohort carry one of these protective alleles. So it's neither necessary nor sufficient. There are people who, who don't carry them that have done well for very long periods of time. There are people who carry them who have died from an AIDS-related illness. So it's not the final answer, but we think it's certainly an important clue. 